Hi guys, welcome to another video. Today's video is going to be a little bit different. So first of all, I got um, Gris Chanel from BDK Parfums. I have it right here. I did not open it. It's still in its foil and everything. I know how it smells, so this is not going to be like a first impression, like a blind buy kind of thing. But what I want to do today, besides opening this, unboxing this and smelling it with you, I want to compare it with another fragrance, a fragrance that is much, much uh, cheaper, more affordable than this one. So this retails for about 180 euros, or if we're talking dollars, this is about uh, 195. So this is quite expensive. It's a niche house, so yeah, um, this is how it goes usually with niche perfumes. But this other fragrance that I want to compare this one with is extremely, extremely affordable. And I'm not saying they're identical, they're not. You know how it goes. Like you cannot get the same type of um, quality as you get from a niche house. And I want to also compare it with another one, which is sort of like has the same type of feel to it. It's not identical. So none of these are identical, but there are notes in common. And there is a certain vibe that just goes through all three of them. So let's see. So first of all, let's unbox Gris Chanel. Let me spray it on my hand. And then let's talk a little bit about it. So this one is the produce of the hype. I first heard about it um, on YouTube from Demi Rowling. She was talking about it, hyping it quite hard. And at the time, like the notes she was describing, I was not extremely attracted to. So at the time I was like, hmm, okay. And I remember um, wanting to sample it and there was not, uh, it was not possible where I was living. And later on, I got to sample it. And because that day I sampled a bunch of stuff, this one didn't impress me that much. But then I smelled it again. And again, and this is how the box looks and I cannot open it, <laughs> and again, and at some point, the miracle happened. Okay, I finally got it out. Okay, so this is how it looks inside its little bed here. Uh, I will not drop it. Yeah, it's not, it's not really possible to drop it because it's quite okay it's really impossible to take it out <laughs> there's another danger okay so this is the bottle this is how it looks like it's quite minimalist the juice inside is a shade of gray I don't think I've seen a gray perfume so far and by the way the name in French as far as I know I do speak a little bit of French, but I can't say my French is exquisite. Gris means gray and Charnel I had to look up and it means carnal. So gray, carnal. I don't really know what exactly it means. If we have anyone here who speaks French, please enlighten us and tell us if this is like, if it means something, not just the words put together, but if it actually has a meaning. Okay. so. Let's spray this and let's see what happens. And then we'll read the notes together. Okay, so as you already know, I am um, quite infatuated with this one. That's why I got it. Uh, this is... It, it's hard to describe because it's both elegant, it's subtle, it's somehow milky, like there is this milky quality coming from the fig, because yes, this has fig in it. And the fig used to scare me because I'm not into fig and I was like, mm -mm, stay away from me, fig. Um, also has black tea. And I do pick up the black tea. I really do the fig as well. 
and we'll read the notes together, as I was saying. So let's put this aside for the moment. I did write the notes down in my little notebook. I got another notebook, this time a red one. So uh, it goes like this. Cardamom, fig and black tea in the beginning. So it's like definitely a little bit spicy, not too much. That cardamom gives it that spiciness. It's milky. Um, it's probably the fig. Um, and the tea. I can definitely pick up the tea. Then we have iris, bourbon vetiver. So iris, I'm, I cannot say this is like an extremely powdery scent. I don't get a lot of powder from this one compared to other iris scents. So yes, there is a slight sweetness in there. Okay, the, the sweetness is not like too much. There's just a little bit of sweetness. And then um, in the dry down, we have sandalwood, which makes it even more creamy. And we have tonka bean. So these are the notes for this one. Um, so this one made me kind of think of like, I find it not sexy, not, not sexy, <laughs> sexy, not sexy, but sensual. So um, I think I stated the difference in my mind between these two. This is sensual. This is a woman um, with messy hair, with no makeup, wearing maybe some sort of like nude silk. This is elegant, but it's that kind of, let's say sexy, because I cannot find a better word. It's that kind of like um, effortless, effortless, chic and sexy. You know what I'm saying? It's not like she's not really trying, but she's, she's doing it. She's, she's nailing it <laughs> like crazy. So this one... Um, I know men who love this one. When I bought it today, a guy was buying it in front of me, <laughs> actually. That was quite funny. Um, but I have to be honest with you, I find this quite feminine. I don't know how this works on a guy, but I find this to be quite sensual, as I was saying, quite feminine, quite soft. Um, just that, that type of like elegant, chic, sophisticated but again in an effortless way not not something that you've worked on it's just like it comes natural so this um favorite season i would say fall winter spring maybe even summer but not in the heat of the summer i don't see this in like 40 degrees celsius this would be a little bit overwhelming, although this is quite soft. So this turns into a skin scent. Um, it's not necessarily one of those like crazy bombs on your skin. Everybody can smell you. The sillage is not that as much as I tested it because I had uh, some samples. I had a little decant. So I did a little bit of testing before actually getting the bottle. So this is as much as I know right now. Now that I have the bottle, I can actually wear this and tell you, probably in the whole, when we will do that, I'll tell you more about how this is acting on my skin. As I was saying in the beginning, I want to compare this to another fragrance. Um, I don't want to refer it as a dupe necessarily, because I don't think it's there 100%. It's probably there, I would say, 70% ish around that um so the fragrance i'm talking about is a celebrity fragrance yeah very very affordable it's around ten dollars i think you can find it for less i was looking at some uh, watching some videos on youtube and people were talking about like even even cheaper than that so i guess you can find it for like i don't know eight <laughs> five eight i don't know uh depends on where you live of course so the fragrance i'm talking about is Indie by Katy Perry. This one I mentioned in my wish list. I said that I want to get this fragrance because at the time I thought it will be similar to Sunny Side Up from uh, Juliet Hezegam. But I don't have that fragrance. 
I smelled it, I know I was like, hmm, this is not bad, but I was not convinced by it. So this one, let's spray it on the other hand so we can do like a proper uh, comparison between the two. My camera decided it was time for a break, so it interrupted me in the middle of the sentence. How rude is that? Where was I? <laughs> so I was saying that I'm going to spray uh, Katy Perry's Indie on my other hand to do a proper comparison. So this one, huge different, difference in price, okay? Also, uh, yeah, I was saying that I will start with the negative. The negative um, part with this one is the longevity and the performance overall on the skin, which is not is not really good. It's about two hours. Yeah, I think even under two hours. So this one is just not really doing the job. But for this price, like I guess you can simply carry it in your bag if you're on a budget and you want something that is slightly similar, has the same kind of feel, let's just say that, to this one, to Grish Arnett, which by the way smells amazing. That tea note is so prominent, but it's like an aromatic tea. It's like a spicy tea. So this one, um, let's see the notes. It has plum, so the other one doesn't have plum, but it has white tea. The other one has also tea, but I think in that case is black tea. Okay, so we have tea in both. Then this one has bergamot. And yeah, the, the, it's, it's like fresher, let's just say it's crispier a little bit. But this is just the beginning, okay? Then it has uh, white cedar, lily of the valley, I don't get a lot of lily of the, uh, the valley. I get a woody, a woody creamy smell from it right now. Um, and then it has cyclamen. Okay, then in the dry down, there are a bunch of different mosques, like a bunch. I was, I was just looking at the notes and I'm like, okay. <laughs> we have a bunch of these different mosques, and then we have tonka bean and we have amber. So um, we have the tonka bean in Grey Charnel as well, um, but the rest, this one has like a musky feel to it as, as well. Woody, musky, spicy feel, but everything is just subtle, like the mix. Nothing is bothering you, with this one, it's extremely creamy and, and blended together. Uh, this one either, I mean, it's, it's not, there's nothing sharp in here, although it has bergamot. So this one, really nice. Am I saying that they're identical? Like I said, I don't want to say that they're identical, okay? Uh, if you want to experience this, you have to get this one, but if you're on a budget, this one is really, really nice, especially for a celebrity scent, okay? So this is still gives you that powdery uh, vibe, gives you that woody, a uh, little bit sweet. It's really, really nice. Like, I see that they did put some effort into doing this one compared to other designer or um, these celebrity scents. Like, some of them are really lame let's just say the truth okay some of them are just the same type of like fruits and flowers mixed together there's nothing special there or they simply smell like soap or shampoo or whatever it's not like they they've even tried or at least that's that's what i get uh from them the second fragrance that kind of made me think about that one just kind of gave me that vibe the same vibe again this one is even less uh similar so if Indy is kind of similar, this one not so much, but just the vibe, the type of scent is kind of the same. And I'm talking about Versace's Crystal Noir. And I know that this one is so known. A lot of you probably own this one, use it, love it. So this one um, has some similar, some similarities in here 
doesn't go in the same direction. This one has opens with pepper, ginger, and cardamom. So you see we had cardamom basically in uh, all three, no, in, in the first and in this one. So there's that, a little bit of spiciness. Then we have coconut. So this takes it in a more tropical area. Uh, when I smell this one, this kind of smells like um, a vacation on an island, but like nighttime. What you would wear nighttime when you go out on a vacation. At least, yeah, to me. This smells kind of like fun, but not that necessarily that young fun and like, uh, you know, just like a sophisticated fun, like more grown up fun. Uh, then we have gardenia. I've always stayed away from gardenia. I thought gardenia smells like um, like an old, old, extremely ancient kind of perfume. Like, I don't know, it's just uh, my opinion about gardenia. Then it's orange blossom, it's peony and sandalwood. So again, sandalwood, it was in the first. Now it's here as well, giving the creaminess. Musk, again, that, that musk and amber, and we had the amber in um, in the second one, in, in Indy. Yeah, so this one, um, like I said, is just just a common feel. It's, it's not a clone, it's not a dupe. Even the second one, uh, Indy, that's not a clone, not a dupe. Just something slightly, slightly similar. But nothing, nothing really compares to the original, let's say, to Gris Charnel, which I believe to be the best from BDK. As far as I got to just smell them and explore this house, I also am attracted to more from them, to Uda Brahmad from them, to... Um, there's also... Um, one with leather, I don't remember the name, then there is uh, this new one, uh, Celle d'Argent, and some more. And I really, really want to um, smell them more, put them on my skin. I always try to do this with fragrances, like I never really just buy, like, smelling from the bottle, and that's it. Especially if we're talking about a more expensive fragrance, I always sample more than once, if I can, of course, if it's not a blind buy, then... <laughs> Um, yeah, I try to put it on my skin different days without smelling much else because then and only then I get the real idea about that perfume and I don't just buy something that after a week I don't like anymore. So yeah, guys, this was it for today. Tell me if you like this kind of video where I just kind of compare an expensive fragrance with something more affordable. Tell me if this is your kind of video, if you want me to do more like this, and I will, because I do have some ideas about some more dupes, clones, stuff like that. And um, I will see you next time with another video. Take care.